Okay, now that we understand the difference between balanced and unbalanced forces, draw and force diagrams, now we can start to look at forces that are going off at bizarre angles. So to understand that, first we got to take a look at some basic concepts. If I exert this force straight up, what is that force trying to do to the box? It's trying to lift it straight up. What about if I exert a force like this on the box? What is this force trying to do? It's trying to pull it over. Now, where students have trouble is this force. This force is trying to do two things at the same time. What two things is it trying to do? It's trying to pull it to the right and it's trying to lift it. So whenever we have a diagonal force, that force is actually trying to do two things at the same time. Trying to pull over and trying to pull up. That's the concept that we need in order to figure out these forces at angles. So whenever there's a force at an angle, realize it's trying to do two things at the same time. So now what we can do is take this force vector and break it up into the two components that make up that force, a vertical and a horizontal. We can use our trig to calculate that. So let's say that we're exerting a force of 10 newtons at an angle of 35 degrees with the horizontal. So now we can use our SOHCAHTOA to calculate those two sides. Let's calculate the vertical side. Since this is the opposite side and that 10 is the hypotenuse, we can use our definition of sine. So sine of the angle is opposite over hypotenuse we're going to calculate for this opposite side. Make sure on your calculator that you go through this calculation so that you can get the same number that we get. So when you go through and you calculate the vertical side, you multiply both sides by 10, you should get 5.7. So that means the vertical component is 5.7. So when I exert a force of 10 newtons at an angle of 35 degrees, I'm trying to lift it with 5.7 newtons. That's what that tells me. Let's calculate the horizontal component. Since that's the adjacent side and we have the hypotenuse of 10, we can use cosine. Cosine is adjacent over the hypotenuse. Let's calculate that adjacent side. So when you plug and chug, you get 8.2. That means that when I exert a force of 10 newtons at an angle of 35 degrees, I'm trying to pull it over at 8.2 newtons and I'm trying to lift it with 5.7 newtons. That's the key. So when we use our trigonometry, we can figure out what these two parts are doing to substitute in for that 10 newtons. So the key point now is once you get these two values, that 10 disappears. You don't use that 10 anymore. You're going to use the 8.2 horizontally and the 5.7 vertically. So let's use this idea in this type of problem here. Here we have a sine of mass 2 kilograms suspended by two cables of equal angles. So let's start off and draw the force diagram. Well, we got force of gravity going down, and we know that that force of gravity is 9.8 times the mass. So since the mass was 2 kilograms, that's how we got the 19.6. We got this force of tension going off here, we got this force of tension going off here, and here are the angles. Now since those are at equal angles, we can assume that each one is going to support half the weight. So if the total down force is 19.6, the total up force has to be 19.6. But since we have two strands, each one will support half of that 19.6. So what two things is this diagonal force trying to do? Trying to pull over and trying to lift. This guy is trying to pull over and trying to lift. The lift here plus the lift here has to equal the down here. So my ups, I got two of them, have to equal my downs here. So that's why each one is 9.8. So now we can use our trigonometry and calculate the hypotenuse because that's what they want us to find is the tension. So I have my angle, I have my side opposite, 
I want my hypotenuse, so I'm going to use my definition of sine. So the sine of the angle is the opposite over the hypotenuse. Solve for the hypotenuse, get 17.1 newtons. So that's the tension in the string, 17.1 newtons. What about if we pull a box at an angle? Now the key is constant velocity. Constant velocity says balanced forces. So that means my up forces cancel my down forces, my left forces cancel my right forces. Balanced forces. So first start off and draw the force diagram. So you got force of gravity going down, you got the frictional force going against the direction of the motion, parallel to the surface, you got the normal force, and you got the applied force. Well, here we have a diagonal force, so what two things is this force trying to do? Trying to pull over and trying to lift it. Now we can see which forces are working with each other, which forces are going against each other. You can see that this red force going to the right is going against this frictional force going to the left. I have two forces going up. These two guys added should add up to this guy. Again, draw your diagram and then everything gets exposed to you. So, let's name the applied force in the x direction FAX. Let's do the y component of the applied force FAY. So we're just going to label these. Again, once you get these, that diagonal disappears. So now we can start to write our force equations. Our lefts equal our rights. So here's my left force, frictional force, equals my right force, FAX. Those two guys are equal to each other. They balance each other out. What about my vertical forces? I have two up forces. I have one down force. So those two forces going up added, because they're in the same direction, equal my one force going down. So if you use your trigonometry and you calculate this value and you know your FG, you can figure out your normal force using this equation.